Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Nanam Paramam Dheyam. Knowledge is supreme. Okay, so that proves, so I want to give couple of remarks on this proof and then we will start deducing the uh, corollaries. Okay, so the first remark is, so remarks, first one is, see here in this proof, we have never uh, used uh, any special uh, structure on of the field k whether it is finite infinite and so on it works for arbitrary field uh, if moreover if you assume that k is an infinite field if k is infinite then this the change of variables, the automorphism we have defined, here it was not linear because it depended on the gamma is, the gamma is could be bigger. So, but in case of infinite field, one can choose linear change of variables. Okay, uh, for for future use, probably I want to say a little bit more. So, this change of variable term. So, for example, when one says an affine, an affine transformation. of the polynomial algebra. in in and not necessary or a field so allow me to use arbitrary base ring because what we have used it for a field but the definition makes sense for arbitrary base ring of r x1 to x n a fine transformation of the polynomial algebra over r means it's a map automorphism of special type one phi which is given by like this. So, let us write small uh, capital X as the column x 1 to x n. So, if I want R automorphism I just have to give values on capital X s. So, I just have to tell you where this column goes. So, this column let us say goes to A x plus b, b is also b1 to bn and where this a is a matrix aiha is a matrix it is in g a l n r, the clear if the matrix is in g l n r means it has inverse. So, over a ring, it is it's complicated to check whether a matrix is in GLNR. All that we have to check is determinant should be a unit in determinant of A should be unit in R. In case of field, we just have to check it is a non zero constant. So, such, such automorphisms are called affine transformations of the polynomial algebra. So, for example, for example, if you take a matrix A to be the identity matrix E n, 
then this is a translation then it is phi is a translation and on the other hand if b is 0 then it is linear see in our case it's it's b is 0 but it's not linear right so these are not the 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 automorphism we have given in the proof of the lemma that is not of this type but if you if you take if you assume your field to be infinite then you can actually choose such a transformation actually so k infinite then you can actually choose then you can take phi to be what is called simple linear so the matrix so to give such a transformation i have to give a matrix so in that case you can take the matrix like this a equal to diagonal 1 below it is 0 and here you can take minus a1 so on minus a n a n minus a n so that simply means you can take y i to be equal to x n x n minus a i no x i minus a i x n i is from 1 to n minus see we have taken in the lemma x i minus x n power somebody so if k were infinite then you can get away with this small uh, such linear ones and clearly this matrix is you can see it's it's a nice matrix such such transformations are called simple in general it is it is uh, the the group of what if i write this odd even for field k x1 to xn as k algebra so k algebra automorphisms of the polynomial algebra over a field in n variables this is a group and this group is very complex to understand for example it is easy to see when n equal to 1 what are the automorphisms of uh, k algebra automorphisms of polynomial ring in one variable that is very easy they are just a affine linear ones they are of the type x going to ax plus b and a is non zero so that's very easy to check for for n equal to 1 already n equal to 2 it's a difficult task and and even n bigger equal to 3 it's even more difficult and even n bigger equal to 3 it's an open question so how what is the structure of this this group and n equal to 2 is also quite difficult but known okay so now let us draw some um, consequences already from the classical version and then then we will go on to prove the more uh, complicated one uh, uh, which is uh, due to nagata which was proved in 60s so 9 okay so consequences these consequences have a lot of geometric meanings also but i want to do that geometric meaning after i have little bit language from the geometry so today there will be only the algebraic consequence uh, written in terms of algebra so corollary one this is one um, form of this is also called um, algebraic version of hilbert's null standards so Hilbert's null standards, Hilbert's 
नूल टेलन दस दिस इज आई विल एब्रीवेट इट एज एच एन एस एंड जस्ट आई विल गिव सम नंबर थ्री दिस नंबरिंग कम्स फ्रॉम फ्रॉम द वे आई हैव अरेंज द लेक्चर्स समटाइम बैक सो दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड जारिस की लेमा it says if you have a field extension l or k is a field extension and l is finite type over k l is algebra of finite type over k then l is actually finite L is finite over K. So in particular algebra, in particular algebra over K. Finite extensions are algebra. So proof. All right. Um, so by NNL, L is a finite type over K. Therefore, by NNL, there exist elements Z1 to Zm such that sub uh, L is integral over the subalgebra generated by this, and these elements are algebraically independent. So, so there exist Z1 to Zm algebraically independent over K. With L containing this is integral. Integral. L integral over k z one to z m. But L is a field. This is a field, and this is a polynomial algebra. And if a field is integral over some ring. then you would have seen that that one is also field so therefore this is also field then so this is a field because it's integral but when can such a polynomial algebra be a field the only chance is when m is zero so that implies m is zero and so that means l is integral over k But integral in case of a basis field, then it's same thing as algebraic. But and it's finite type. Finite type algebraic is finite. So finite type. Actually, finite type plus integral. This is equivalent to finite. Okay. The next one, corollary two. Uh, suppose A is finite type. A is K algebra of finite type. And suppose M is a maximal ideal. M belongs to spm a then the residue field a by m is a finite extension of of k proof See, A is the K algebra of finite types. A is here. This residue field is A by M is here. K is here. K contain K is contained in A. This is finite type. So therefore, this is also finite type over K. The images of algebra generators of A will generate A by M as an algebra. So if this is generated by 
the small elements x1 to xn then the images further images they will generate a by m. So, this a by m is also of finite type over k and the earlier corollary says in this case this is an algebraic extension that is what we wanted to find it. So, by corollary 1 a by m is finite over k. Okay. Corollary 3. So, this I will call this is also called weak form of HNS. I will not give the number now. When I write the notes, I will give the number properly. So, this is weak form K is an algebraically closed field. Then we have a map from k power n to SPM of kx1 to xn. Maximal ideal in kx1 to xn. Namely, if I have a tuple, a is a1 to an, then map it to ma. M A is the ideal generated by x1 minus a1, xn minus a n. Note that clearly this is a maximal ideal. That is because the easiest way to see that is, let me go to the next one. So, the easiest way to say that look at the evaluation map k x1 to xn to k and the k algebra homomorphism is x i going to a. This is a k algebra homomorphism and kernel uh, let us call this as epsilon. Kernel of epsilon is precisely generated by x 1 minus a 1 x n minus a and it's clearly subjective therefore uh, this mod kernel is actually the residue field is k so it's not only maximal ideal but its residue field is k okay so uh, we want to prove this map is then the map is bijective that is the assertion. So, proof this map is clearly injective, uh, clearly injective. Simply you have to check that the ideal generated by x 1 minus a 1, x n minus a n and if you take a different point x n minus b 1 x n minus b n these are different if a equal to a 1 to a n is different from b 1 to b n. This is clear because if they are different at least one of the component is different and then the difference if these ideals were equal then both it will contain both the polynomials x 1 let us say without ash, without loss a 1 is different from b 1 then this if they were equal then this and this polynomial both are there. So, their difference is there. So, a 1 minus b 1 is there, but a 1 minus b 1 is uh, different uh, than 0. So, it is a unit and therefore, it is not possible. So, clearly it is injective. Surjective because if uh, uh, because look at the map uh, k x 1 to x n. So, take any maximal ideal m and take look at this map k x 1 to x n and then go mod it. This is a natural subjection and then we have by 
because k is algebraically closed we are assuming this extension this extension is algebraic that is what we have proved in corollary 2 because this is algebra of finite type this maximal ideal mod so this is finite type field over k but k is algebraically closed so there is no algebraic extension other than itself so it is equality here. But then you can there exist a 1 to a n in k such that they are the lifts of this. So, x i minus a i or x i is congruent to a i mod m, but that is equivalent to checking that the this point ideal ma, I wrote no, did I write the image? Ah, this is ma he is contained in m, but this is maximal, so equality here. So that proves that each maximal ideal is coming from a point. Such maximal ideals are called points. So I think it's a, it's a time um, uh, we will stop here and I will continue more consequences in the next time because uh, we, we should see the power of this normalization lemma. So, one more lecture I will need for consequences and then we will go on to the more stronger uh, version of uh, normalization lemma which is due to Nagata.